My area of expertise is artificial intelligence, and in particular, the social and ethical implications of applications of machine learning. But I'm also part of the philosophy department, and there my focus is on philosophy of science. And the areas of science I look at are AI, um, neuroscience, and psychiatry. I was hired through the Queen's National Scholar Program, and that's a program that brings in people who do interdisciplinary work and who look at questions of equity. And the, the School of Computing has been expanding recently, and a lot of the recent hires have been along the edges of computing, so where it meets other fields, people who do computing in medicine or in art, or in my case, who combine it with philosophy. And that's, that was a really good fit for me because I, because I do interdisciplinary work, um, it wouldn't be a very comfortable fit being in just one department. So I don't have to try to be just one thing. One of the things I'm most interested in is how AI's abilities compare to human cognition or to animal cognition. So one of the, the particular questions I'm interested in right now is how deep learnings, successes and failures um, in, inform those kinds of questions. Um, another area that I'm interested in is augmented reality and how, um, how virtual reality or augmented reality can change our abilities as humans. So um, applications both to sort of add different cognitive abilities to what we normally can do and also to, to applications in, in mental health. And on the more philosophical side, um, a lot of my work is focused on um, trying to convince people within AI that they should be more concerned with the social and ethical implications of their work, and also trying to inform people outside of AI about why they should be concerned with what's, what's happening in AI. AI ethics is such a brand new field. It's only existed for a couple of years. And it's still in this beginning stage where people are sort of like screaming for more attention to be paid to the to the problems that have been identified. Um, but it's starting to transition into a more mature phase of finding ways to solve the problems. Um, but because it's largely been kind of like reactive to the problems in, in AI um, and in social media sort of taking over our lives and um, and surveillance and, and in the tech industry more generally. It is a field that could cease to exist if those problems all get solved or if those problems keep expanding and changing, then it could expand and change too. And so I think I, I probably see it becoming like a major government department and a major legal specialization and a department of the IT firm. And so that's where I see it going. About five years ago, I thought that the mental health crisis was the big pressing um, problem in society that I could best contribute to. So what I was starting to do was foundational work in computational psychiatry. And that's something that I, I'm still working on sort of on the side, but other crises have kind of come up and, and taken precedence since then. Um, for example, the the revelation that, that Edward Snowden made that the, the governments around the world are sort of surveilling people's online lives to an extent that, that we didn't realize and followed up by things like the Cambridge Analytica scandal. It became clear that that was a more pressing problem and that I could also contribute to. So as someone who had done graduate training both in AI and in philosophy, um, it made sense for me to sort of switch gears and, and start focusing on, on that kind of problem. So I did some policy work around um, privacy of health data. And now um, one of the problems that I'm, that I'm looking at is um, some applications of AI that are kind of like reinventing 19th century eugenics techniques. And um, yeah, so I'm looking at sort of human rights um, issues within the AI mainly now. Obviously, it's important for a grad student to have qualities like perseverance and to be good at critical thinking for just for graduate work in general. But for graduate work in, in AI ethics or in um, AI applied to ethical questions or social questions, I also think that it's important to, to have skin in the game. So a lot of the, the best work and the most crucial work in, in this field has been done by people who have been personally affected by um, harmful technologies. So people who 
um, you know, have had traumatic experiences um, going through scanners in airports or um, who have been falsely arrested um, because of facial recognition technology or that sort of thing. So people who um, have been personally affected by some of the harmful forces in AI or whose family or whose chosen family are in a position to, to possibly be harmed by these kinds of technologies. That's, that's also something that I would look for. And so far those people have come to me and found me rather than me going out and finding them. So obviously I'm also interested in philosophy of science. But beyond that, I've been reading a lot about gender and race recently, and I've been reading and watching a lot of science fiction um, and thinking about how science fiction can be used as a way of thinking through moral and social problems. Um, and I'm, I'm developing a course where I'm going to be um, having students just read and watch science fiction and then talking about philosophical issues found in it. And some of the themes are going to be um, sort of like aliens and monsters and um, what does it mean to be human and um, what kind of a future do we want and what kind of a future do we think we're going to, that we're leading towards. Pre-pandemic, I played roller derby, but I'm not sure how soon a sport that involves so much very close contact is going to be coming back. So in the meantime, I've been taking a handstand class and that's probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And I also do um, stuff that's sort of on the edge of craft and textile arts. So things like knitting, sewing, quilting, that sort of thing. <laughs>